So being my expertise is chronology, it does not escape me at all that in ancient times, the 20-year period was heavily focused on. As a matter of fact, the Sumerian sexagesimal system is predicated on 20-year units. So is the most ancient calendars in the world. The Mayan long count and the Olmec calendars date to the vapor canopy period, and they're based on units of 20 years. This is where the Aztecs got their calendar round. The calendar round was, ba was, was also based off a cycle. So this... Uh, this 20-year period was also uh, uh, subdivided. It was, th it was three 20-year periods that were considered holy in the ancient Chinese system because they, they measured time in 60-year units, thinking the mandate of heaven would change over 60 years. This was the original concept. They, 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 they devolved. But in ancient times, the 20-year system was, was feared. They always watched out for an event on that 20th year. Now, here's, here's what we're told in the eschatology. We are told that the last days will be like the days of Noah. Okay, well, there's a lot going on in the days of Noah, but in the days of Noah, we knew how they counted time. One of those methods was counting the days, evenings to mornings. Another, another method was the 20-year cycle, the Sumerian sexagesimal system. So, I'm a... The 60-year period was the great cycle, and it had lesser cycles of 20 years. So I'm not surprised to find that 2020 is 20 years before 2040. For those new to my channel, and if you don't know, I have an overwhelming amount of data sets that all show that the month of May in the year 2040 is the breaking of the sixth seal. It is the return of the sixth sky dragon of Mother Shipton. It is specifically dated to the month of May by Nostradamus. The sun goes dark. The moon turns red. Red rain, red mud, and red rocks fall from the sky during volcanoes and earthquakes. It is the return of the vapor canopy. I have three published books that address this, probably over 100 articles, uh, and um, I don't know, so many hundreds of videos, I don't even know, that cross, they all bleed into each other and cross over. So much, the data, my, my archaics veterans, you already know, I don't even have to convince you, you've already seen the, the, the data, you know. So it's not astonishing to me that the first seal broken in January 2020 is 20 years before the return of the Phoenix in May of 2040. It's a 20 year difference, but it's deeper than that. We have to go back to 2012. What was going on in 2012? Well, let me remind some of you, the entire world was waiting on the end of the world. Now, many people didn't take it seriously, but millions did. And there are many authors who got rich off that doom saying, while one author named Jason Brashears was releasing books before 2012, telling the world and anybody who would listen that nothing was going to happen because the 13th Bacton of the Mayan long count did not end in 2012. The scholars in 1952, when they factored the Mayan long count, had messed up. And they used the 365.25 day to reckon the 13 Bactons, which are 144,000 days each. Each one, 144,000 days, divisible by 20. Each one of them. Each 144,000 day period. A Bacton is divisible perfectly by 20. They used the corrupt year system that the Maya didn't use even know initially when the system was created. They knew a 360-day year, which is divisible by 20. That's what they knew because the entire Mayan long count at 360 days a year being 13 Bactons of 144,000 days is precisely 1,872,000 days or 52 centuries. Perfectly 5,200 years. But the scholars used the wrong year, 365.25. That's how they got 2012, but it doesn't. The Mayan long count ends in 2046. The return of the Nemesis X object, not the Phoenix. So 
In 2012, the signal year that the publishing world, Hollywood, periodicals, everybody, uh, social media, everybody had the focus on 2012. So what happened in July of 2012? I'm going to tell you what happened. The opening ceremony in London for the Olympics in 2012 was a ritual. And it was observed by millions of people, which means millions of people participated in a ritual that showed hospital beds surrounding inside an auditorium and a, an a, immense ritual playing out with hospital beds, IV drips, the whole shebang was laid out. I don't need to go into detail. You need to go watch it. Because in 2012, the 2012 London Olympics, remember what London is. London is the city. It doesn't belong to the people of the UK. London is the city, just like Vatican doesn't belong to Italy, just like Washington, D.C. does not belong to the people of the United States of America. There's a reason these three ancient stone obelisks from the old world were put at these locations. In London, they did the ritual at the opening ceremony, showing the hospital bed, showing the IVs. Everything's laid out for all to see. But that wasn't enough. It was the beginning. They needed closure. So, in 2012, the closing ceremony for the London Olympics, they showed the phoenix in the sky with the world underneath it burning. It's all laid out for you to see. The first ritual, the first ritual was a prophetic foreshadowing of the breaking of the seal in 2020. The second ritual was the unfolding of events 20 years later in 2040. It's all there for you all, for you to see. What do the Olympics represent? The Olympiads, the ancient Greek calendar. Book of Revelation was written in what language again? 